Thank you very much. I would like to start by uh, acknowledging the, my opportunity to, to be here and to talk about this topic that is probably quite different from the others that we have been hearing this, this morning, but uh, that is also something that is of concern. Um, I will talk about uh, an, a form of uh, emerging contamination in water that is antibiotic resistance. It's something that uh, probably it was not uh, discussed several years ago and that nowadays is, uh, we are uh, accumulating evidences that, uh, uh, that indeed antibiotic resistance uh, is a problem in the environment. Why is antibiotic resistance a problem? Uh, when we talk about antibiotic resistance and norm normally when we hear, uh, even in the communication to, to discuss this problem, um, oh, sorry, now it's working too much. Um, normally, we always uh, refer to the hospital uh, and to patients that are in the hospitals. And uh, we, we know nowadays that, uh, and this is uh, uh, taken from the report from 2014 from the World um, uh, Health Organization, uh, about the, the real threat that is the problem of antibiotic resistance. And uh, we realize that uh, it is no longer a problem that is confined to hospital settings or to patients. It is also already spread in the environment. And uh, before talking about water and antibiotic resistance, I would like to say a few words about uh, the nature of antibiotic resistance. Uh, it emerges and it uh, evolves very, very rapidly. Here we can see uh, the, the dates when some, antibiotic, uh, some antibiotics were available in the market, and below we can see the short period of time that was needed for resistance to become a problem in the clinical settings. Uh, antibiotic resistance can evolve very, very rapidly, and this is really frightening. Why does it happen? We have two different processes. One is that bacteria can transfer antibiotic resistance among them. So when they are under uh, what we say a selective pressure, when bacteria are endangered by antibiotics, they can share the uh, resistance genes to other bacteria in the community. And this can happen in our gut, but it can happen also in the environment. And another process that is very, very important is the selection. When bacteria are under the pressure of antibiotics, only those that are resistant will survive and the others will die. So uh, these are the major mechanisms that happen always that we have antibiotics and resistant bacteria together. And for this reason, uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria and antibiotic resistance genes are nowadays considered, or can be nowadays considered, uh, contaminants of emerging concern. But they are special type, a special type of contaminants. Why? Because they can auto-replicate in the environment, they can auto-proliferate. So they can spread long distances, for instance, through wildlife and through uh, water, and they can proliferate. So uh, they are a very special form of pollution is biological pollution and biological pollution can auto replicate and it's, it's really a problem. The urban water cycle has everything to do with the spread of antibiotic resistance. In this cycle we have two major parts, one that is the, let's call it the unclean part, uh, where we have the water that results from our use, from our consumption. Uh, this water is normally collected, is treated, and then is again uh, delivered to the environment. And uh, when we do all this process, uh, we hope that the water is clean, is good enough to go again uh, to the environment. And probably is not always like that. On the other part, of the water cycle, we have the, the water that is abstracted from uh, clean water sources, is uh, normally disinfected and uh, is distributed for us to use. And in both parts of this cycle, we can have 
uh, we have evidences that uh, contamination with antibiotic resistance can occur. Uh, let's say a few words about wastewater treatment plants. Here we have the ideal conditions for antibiotic resistant bacteria to spread and to proliferate. Why? Because here are discharged uh, very, very high doses of antibiotic resistant bacteria from humans, from animals, which come from our houses, from hospitals, and from industry, even if they are pre treated before they are discharged in the, in the municipal collector. Here we have also antibiotic residues and we have several other contaminants. And this mixture is probably very, very uh, good for bacteria to survive, uh, mainly for antibiotic resistance to survive. What we can see from different studies that were conducted with different wastewater treatment processes, what we can see is that uh, treated water that is uh, discharged in the environment, treated final uh, water, uh, it will contain uh, 10 to 9 antibiotic resistant bacteria that is discharged per minute. This is a huge amount of antibiotic resistant bacteria that is being discharged continuously, 10 to 9 per minute. And this is an uh, underestimation of the, of the real number probably. So, this is a reality, and this is a reality that apparently is occurring everywhere. Sometimes it happens also something that is not good. Some types of antibiotic resistance can even increase during the wastewater treatment process. Why? Uh, when I say increase, I'm saying that the proportion of a resistant bacteria will increase, will be selected during this process. And this is also something that can be really a problem because instead of cleaning, we are promoting resistance to spread. When we compare, and here in these studies, we compared, we used Shirishia coli, that is a fecal uh, uh, contaminant. Uh, we compared, based on multilocal sequence typing, we compared Shirishia coli from different sources, from urban wastewater, from hospital effluent, from patients, from urban streams, wildlife that live in, in the, our city, for instance, in, in Porto, where I come from, and from wildlife that live in a, in a natural reserve. And what we could see is that these bacteria that share these different environments, they are genetically closely related, which means that probably this contamination that comes from hospitals, it is indeed already found in the environment. Uh, these, these birds that are, uh, oh, sorry, uh, that are found, uh, that live in a, oh, I'm sorry, that live in a natural reserve, they have a different lineage of antibiotic resistant, of, uh, of bacteria, of Shirishia coli, which means that indeed is the human impact that is originating this contamination. Okay, if we see that these bacteria are spread everywhere, uh, a logical question that we can make is, okay, are they present in drinking water? Can they reach our tap water? Uh, in principle, we should think, okay, the water is disinfected, so it will be free of antibiotic resistant bacteria. But what we can see is that when water is disinfected, we, we have a real important reduction on the number of bacteria in water. But in reality, when we analyze the tap water in our houses, we find that indeed we have a lot of antibiotic resistant bacteria, also, this bacteria as something that we call intrinsic resistance. It's something that is natural in bacteria and is not acquired by those processes that I mentioned. However, when we analyze the total DNA, which means that we are not cultivating bacteria, we are directly analyzing the DNA extracted from tap water, we find some acquired antibiotic resistance genes. So it means that probably it is a very residual contamination, but it is already there. We don't know 
however, the consequences of this contamination of drink, drinking water for human health. Obviously, we don't know if these genes are indeed transferred for us or not. It's a question that we still have. Okay, when we look to these results, uh, we think, okay, it's time to start doing some things. By one side, we need to uh, control uh, if resistance can go from the environment to humans. This is a major question that we have now. We don't know if it occurs, how extent it is, we don't know. And on the other side, it is very important to control this, this form of contamination, of environmental contamination. So we started working on that. And now I would like to, to share with you some of uh, some networking activities that, that we have been uh, doing. Uh, in a cost action that we have, uh, that finished in 2013, uh, we were more than 100 scientists from different areas and uh, uh, our topic was antibiotic resistance in the environment. And we discussed largely the, what could be done, what is missing now to control this problem. And we went up with a position paper which suggests that there are some things that we can do now and we must do it now. One of the, the problems and one of the gaps that we have nowadays is that we have a lot of data but no data is comparable. So we need urgently to harmonize data and to uh, share this data among countries. This is important for us to know if there are different regions in the world with different patterns of resistance, how this resistance is, re is related with the chemical contamination, and also if, if we implement some measures, if these measures are efficient or not. Uh, so we, we need to have some standardized methods. Another thing that we need to do is to know if there is a risk of transmission of resistance from the environment to humans, and if this risk exists, how can it be controlled? And for that, once again, we need data. And then we need also to define some points where we can control the spread of antibiotic resistance. Hospital probably is one important source. Animal production is another one. So we have some critical points where probably it would be very, very important to improve the treatment processes. Uh, for instance, by uh, implementing advanced uh, treatment processes. In order to go ahead with, the, with these initiatives, we have nowadays some uh, activities. One of these is, is a project uh, that we have already uh, started uh, last year. Uh, we are trying to, to, to initiate uh, a comparable set of data on antibiotic resistance occurrence in, uh, in treated effluents. Uh, this is made under the scope of working group five of the Norman. Norman is a, a network of uh, uh, research and uh, reference laboratories. And we analyzed, we, uh, sorry, uh, we are uh, different countries, I, I think 20 or something, from the west to east uh, Europe, uh, the, the eastern country is Israel, and uh, when we compare the data, and I, I'm not going into details uh, now, uh, but we realize that some resistance genes that are known environmental contaminants, they are indeed in every wastewater treatment, uh, final water that, that we uh, Okay, that we, that we analyze. So the question now is, is not where are the antibiotic resistance genes there, is they are everywhere uh, and how can we control them. Another, uh, this is a, a water GPI a project under the scope of water GPI, STAIR, that stands for Stopping Antibiotic Resistance Evolution, is also uh, related and we hope that we, we will have a very nice overview of, of antibiotic resistance uh, in Europe. Uh, we hope we can launch for the first time uh, a database on antibiotic resistance genes and antibiotic, re uh, antibiotic residues occurrence in drinking water. Uh, 
in, sorry, in wastewater. Another uh, cost action, this one in, in wastewater reuse. I would, uh, you have the, the site over there. Uh, it's a huge uh, cost action uh, with different working groups. Everybody is welcome to visit this site and to join us. And last but not least, um, a PhD uh, training school that will happen in, uh, uh, it will start in October. And uh, again, if you are interested, we, there will be 15 PhD positions available in this interna uh, international uh, training school. So you can, uh, you can apply. Uh, just uh, without money is not possible to, to do uh, work. We have some here, some of the partners in, in these projects. And, uh, and that's all, and I'm sorry if I took too long. Thank you very much. It, obviously, we have lots of activities in this area. <laughs> uh, just one very quick qu question and quick answer. Just one, yes, sir. And while you're talking, I, can I ask for the next speaker to be ready during that time? Okay. Good chance. Yeah. Is there is, uh, is there is, is there is a regulation or guidelines for antibiotics in water? Sorry? Guidelines for antibiotics in waters? No. One of the reasons we, we are uh, working on, on these databases and to gather some data yeah. is then to be able to, to draw some guidelines. So, so to can judge that it's polluted or not polluted, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, the, if, if, it is, uh, if there is a risk of transmission from water to, to humans, that is important for, for this assessment. Yes, of course. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Okay, we continue with the next speaker.